Hey there, this is Santi, and today I want to talk about the mindset behind choosing software to use for your workflow for your systems. So rather than recommending a specific application this time, I want to talk about some of the mindset and the philosophy behind choosing the applications that you use for organizing your systems and your workflow. So with that said, let me show you. This is the mindset. There must be a mindset in order to achieve a nice workflow, a nice system, right? Wrong. There's two. So there's two mindsets that I think are, are very controversial and different. And depending on your personality, you're going to go for one or the other. But let's talk about it, right? So there's two ways, I believe, in which all of us choose an application. And that to me is either we have the Swiss Army knife mindset or the toolbox mindset, right? These are two ways in which we, of what we're looking for when we look into an application, right? So the Swiss Army knife for me is about like, and an all-in-one solution is an application that allows you to have as many features as possible in one same place, right? A place where you can manage maybe your tasks and you can also take your notes, you can collaborate, you can do tons of things. So if we look into examples of this, let's take a look. These are to me applications such as Notion, Evernote and OneNote, right? Notion, I believe, is one of the best ones when it comes to doing several things in one place. It is, in general, really flexible, really powerful. You can do tons of things. But you, you'll see more of my take on these kind of, you know, solutions that are all in one when we go to the next mindset. But if we were to see other examples, we have things such as Evernote, which has been there for a long time. It's really one of the pioneers on, like, you know, productivity apps. It's pretty old school, and it, it keeps kind of going, but it's interesting. I, I personally don't use it much. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's not bad, right? Then we have things such as OneNote by Microsoft, which is really interesting because, again, it's trying to do a lot of things in one place. It's trying to be a one-stop shop. And, you know, there's tons of other examples. You might you might be advertising this all day long, you know, like you might see um, people just talking about all types of applications and they're trying to say like, okay, this is the final all-in-one solution. All of your problems can be done, can be solved from here. You don't need to be switching from application to application. And yeah, tons of them promise certain things, but I'll tell you more about the limitations about this approach in a second, right? So with that, let's go into the other mindset, which if you already guess or you know how I think, I think this is the way to go. And this is the toolbox mindset, okay? Now, to me, this approach is all about having the right tool for the right job, right? So if you need to do an outline, you use a specific app. If you need to manage your to-dos or your tasks, you go to another app. I think this one is way more extensible and I'm going to definitely be talking about some of the pros and cons of this mindset versus the other one. But let's, let's give you some examples. So for examples of the toolbox approach, I, I believe Obsidian is there. You know, Obsidian is interesting because with so ma many plugins that are being created, it's kind of like being uh, becoming way more, how do you, what is the word? I don't know, expansive, like, uh, you know, way more powerful and able to do a lot more things in one place. It's still, personally, I use it as a place to just take notes. That's what I do. I don't do my tasks in there. I don't manage projects in there because... I don't think it's made for it. Even though there's community plugins that allow you to do certain things, and even though I might change my mind in the future, I still see it as a place where I store my notes, right? That's what I do. I take my notes in there, and that's pretty much it, right? I don't collaborate from there. You know, I don't do task management, project management. You know, this is not a hard line, and I might definitely change my mind in the future, but this is how I see it right now. So another example is, of course, Loxic, which I'm a big fan of. I have more videos on this if you're curious about what it is and stuff, but it's basically a Rome, Rome research alternative. And for me, this is a perfect outliner that, you know, for various reasons, I just love using because I managed to own my nodes. There's tons of things. Go check out the video I made on Luxig. I have a couple, how it works with Obsidian and so on. But the cool thing about Luxig is that it is a great outliner, right? It's, it's really powerful. It's really really awesome and in general like for me whenever I need to make an outline or something I want to outline say this video that you're watching I would outline it in Luxic and then I have a structure of how I want to say certain things and so on you know like it's a place for me to create outlines and it's great for that that is the right tool for the right job for me and if we were to look at another example for instance Todoist which if you're not familiar is a task manager slash project manager. I believe it's one of the more beginner-friendly ones, pretty good. You know, um, 
yeah, I mean, to do this is interesting. It's really cool because it's trying to be like what is meant to do. It's not meant for note taking. It's not trying to be meant for note taking. It's meant for managing your to dos. It's even called to doist because it's a to do list. That's all it is, and it's, it does a pretty good job at that, right? So, so yeah, that's that's my take on to doist. But as you can see, in general, like there's tons of things to be considered when it comes to these two different types of approaches to note taking tools, productivity tools, and so on, right? It's, I don't think, personally, I don't think I'll ever find the perfect application. I mean, I used to believe it, right? I used to say like, okay, I think this application is really the one I'm going to be able to do everything I need in this place. But the more I tried applications and because I'm really obsessed with them and I really enjoy it, the more I realized that there's no perfect tool for me, right? I think that honestly, if you really believe in the approach of the all-in-one Swiss Army knife, if you really want one application that will do absolutely everything you need, you're going to have to become a programmer and build your own. And if you're a programmer and if you're someone who is able to do that, then I think this is really cool because you can definitely customize things to be what you need them to be. Either you become a programmer or you learn how to configure really advanced applications that are extensive and super customizable, but usually the learning curve is really steep and it might be really difficult. The best example I can think of, one that I definitely tried to make an all-in-one solution is Emacs. I particularly use SpaceMax and Doom Emacs. So if you really want to look into this, I think that could be the solution. But again, the learning curve is is too much. It's too much for me um, to, you know, like it's not, it's not just a learning curve. It's also how difficult it is to keep everything working all the time. Because when you have a, a tool that is extensive and super customizable and, you know, potentially infinite on it, what it can do, there's a lot of maintenance to be done. That is the case for Emacs, for instance, and that is the case for anything that you customize from scratch or that you build from scratch as a programmer. I think it's really hard to maintain something that just works all the time, that it doesn't break. And if, you know, if you're still searching for this all-in-one solution, it's either you have to program it yourself, you have to customize something that is really extensible, or you have to pay a lot of money for a solution that someone else made that at some point you're gonna still find limitations, you know? That's my take on it. So personally, I would say if you if you're advertised on an application that is promising to do absolutely everything you need, I would say you can do one of two things. One of them is like to use the application, see if you like it, see where it shines at, see where it's good at, use those features, and then move on to the next application that does whatever you particularly need. This is how I do things right now. I can always change my mind. I might at some point, but in general, like, you know, that is actually the case for me with, for instance, Notion. So here it is. Notion is really powerful. It's really good. And a lot of people are trying to, trying to make everything in Notion, make everything work in Notion. To me, the reason why I don't particularly do everything in Notion, even though I really like it and I think it's really, really good and I do recommend it for a lot of people, the reason why I don't use it for absolutely everything is because in general, like the problem is that I don't get to own my files. That's my biggest problem with Notion. Apart from that, I think it's amazing. But the fact that it's in a cloud server, I'm not a huge fan of that and it's very unfortunate. It's not only the privacy concerns that a lot of people talk about. I mean, yeah, that's definitely a factor. But to me, it's more about being able to actually see my files in my computer, being able to do backups as I want them, being responsible for them, right? Which in that case, that's what I do comes to actually using these other ones, right? So Obsidian, wait, yeah, there we go. So Obsidian as well as Logseek. You know, these two store my files in my computer. And because they do that, I can use, you know, I can use the same files across the two of them. I have more discussion on that in other videos. But in general, like my take is that because Obsidian is really great at taking notes, that's what I use. You know, I, I just use Obsidian for a lot of the things that I need to do when I just want to write notes quickly. There's a mobile application that is pretty good. It's, it's probably one of the best ones. And when I need to do a nice outline, you know, I do it in, I do it in Logseek. And what's cool is that then I can send that outline to Obsidian because they share a folder. At least that's how I set it up. You know, th that to me is a nice workflow. It's something I really enjoy. I use other applications for project management and to do's, you know, but that's, that's the thing. I, I don't use Notion as an all-in-one because it doesn't fit my philosophies of owning my data, for instance. And it also has some other limitations. But with that said, this is what I do. Like what I do is, if I need an outline, I use Logseek. If I need to take general notes that I can use from my phone, I use Obsidian. If I need powerful tables that I can collaborate with, 
then I use Notion, you know? So that's kind of like the approach that I have. Now, going back to the whole argument between like, should you use uh, an all-in-one solution, you know, an application that can do to-dos, that can do notes, that can do collaboration, it's really up to you. If you find anything that you really like and maybe your needs for organizing things are not that extensive, you can definitely do this. But if you feel frustrated, like I've had for so long, on trying to find the perfect tool, I would say stop looking for it. Just look what needs you have, what are the things that you want to achieve, and then start looking at which applications do the specific thing you need to do well and start using it. And if you ever want to replace it for another one, you can use a different one. And that way you don't put all your eggs in one basket. That is expression, right? <laughs> yeah, like, you know, if, if one application, you know, just stops existing, then you only need to replace that application rather than, than trying to find an alternative to absolutely everything you do. So, so yeah, that is, that is for me the, the toolbox mindset, which is trying to find the right tool for the right job and cr having this nice box of tools, a toolbox, that does what you need and does it well, you know? So, okay, just, you know, a, a bit of a side note, which is really interesting because when I came up with these this different analogies and these different approaches and when I started to internalize a bit more this uh, toolbox mindset, I realized this is a big contradiction for me because, okay, let, let me explain. So here's an interesting conflict. I believe as people, as individuals, we should strive to be more like Swiss army knives, okay? So to be able to do Tons of different skills, tons of different things. That's at least how I live my life. I love to be able to to spend a lot of time, you know, doing... I'm going to name a few of my hobbies. Language learning, I'm learning Latin, I'm learning Italian. On another side, I love designing little animations like this. I'm using Figma for this, if you're curious. And it's really cool. Actually, let me show you because it's really cool. I spend a lot of time in this and it's really fun. Okay, yeah, let me, let me, let me show you what is going on because it's crazy. You know, things like this, I've been learning this for the past couple of weeks and it's really, really cool. I really enjoy it. It's like making these nice animations out of something similar to a slideshow. And this is how I managed to, to create the presentation that you're watching. Like there's tons of connections between different things. And if you click somewhere, it takes you somewhere else. It shows you one of these specific logos, you know, like there's tons of awesome logic out of doing something like this. And this was completely unnecessary. I didn't need needed to make it this complicated, but, but I really enjoy doing things like this. I really enjoy learning different skills and so on. And, and, you know, like I find it really, um, you know, fulfilling. So as a human, as an individual, I like to be more as a Swiss army knife. So, you know, even though I studied filmmaking and marketing and, you know, I'm kind of applying a bit of that, I have so many hobbies, like <laughs> in here I have my Rubik's cube. Like I love speed cubing and doing things like this like I spent countless hours since I was pretty young like doing things like this and I really enjoy it I play guitar I love music you know and uh, tons of things that I just love doing <laughs> tons of things you know I really advocate for being a human Swiss army knife so I really believe in this philosophy of just doing tons of things I really I'm not an advocate and it's, it's actually really bad I believe that society pushes us to be a specialist, to, to just do one thing and do that, that alone. To me, that's very unfulfilling. Of course, that's really going to depend up to you. But like in general, like the fact that we're pushed to be one tool in a toolbox. Wait, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that we're encouraged to be one tool in a toolbox as humans. To me, that's, yeah, that's just frustrating, you know, and that's part of my life philosophy. I believe in doing tons of things. I believe in learning all types of things and not putting yourself into a box, into one level of you're just this one tool and you contribute to society in this just this one way. I find that very unfulfilling. So that was a contradiction. So when I started like coming up with this way to approach applications, I was really confused. I was like, hmm, but I don't believe in the toolbox, um, you know, like mindset when it comes to people, but I do believe it when it comes to applications. So really interesting to see the dichotomy there, how, how it's really different from what I believe. And yeah, I mean, it's really interesting. So I hope this was somehow insightful. Let me know in the comments if you believe that you're looking for a tool that is more of a Swiss Army knife all in one, or if you believe this idea that I'm pushing forward of the toolbox. And I'm actually really interested to know what you think about us humans. You know, shall we specialize? Shall we be free jacks of all trades? Um, you know, it's, it's, an, it's an argument that I really... I'm passionate about when it comes to, you know, promoting people being jacks of all trades. It's part of like my life philosophy and, 
yeah, it just like links to so many things I believe in. But I still thought that even though it's not the same when it comes to applications, at least for me, uh, this idea of the toolbox, I believe is one of the most useful ones you can do to the way that you use applications and the way that you create systems and workflows that work for you. So yeah, this whole thing got a bit too philosophical, which I think is awesome because I love philosophy, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you like more videos like this. I've, I've been super interested to know, you know, what you think. And of course, also make sure that you check out the links in the description for my online courses. I have one on Obsidian and one on Loxic right now. Tons more coming. There's tons more material coming and more courses. So if you want to support this channel and you want to learn to use the right tools for the right job, then check those courses out. It really means a lot. So I'll leave that in the description. And with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.